In October 2009, a family of three vanished without a trace from Eufaula, Oklahoma, leaving behind a puzzling enigma. Four years later, their skeletal remains were found. But what happened to them? The case continues to confuse investigators and haunt the state to this day, standing out as one of the most perplexing unsolved cases of the 21st century. The unknown circumstances of their death have led to multiple theories, which we will be exploring in this video. Welcome back to True Crime Investigation. Today, we're diving into the eerie and totally baffling case of the Jameson family's disappearance. We're going deep into the mystery, unpacking all the strange clues and theories. So sit tight and prepare yourself for a journey because this one's a real head-scratcher. On the evening of October 8, 2009, 44 years old Bobby Jameson, his wife, 40 years old Sherilyn, and their six years old daughter Madison were packing their possessions into the family pickup truck. They planned to live in a large shipping container on a 40-acre plot of land they intended to buy in Red Oak, Oklahoma. Their aspiration was a simple, minimalistic life in the serene mountainous terrain of a town boasting just over 500 residents. The family wanted a fresh start in the wilderness, and their hopes were high. Despite their intent to move to the secluded mountains, there was no finalized deal for the land. As days passed without any communication from them, worries escalated among their friends and family. They didn't expect the family to entirely cut off everyone they knew, and concerns grew to the point of filing a missing person report, triggering a thorough search effort. Eight days after their mysterious disappearance, the Latimer County Sheriff's Department, led by Sheriff Israel Beauchamp, stumbled upon Bobby's abandoned pickup truck. Inside the vehicle was Madison's dog, Maisie, in a frail and malnourished state, teetering on the edge of survival. Alongside the dog, a startling discovery unfolded, an envelope containing $32,000, a pill bottle, Sherilyn's purse, Bobby's wallet and identification, a GPS, car keys, and their cell phones. But despite this trove of possessions, the Jameson family was nowhere to be found, eluding detection despite a comprehensive search effort. Where had they disappeared? The police meticulously combed through Bobby's cell phone and stumbled upon a recent photograph of young Madison, sparking suspicion that it might have been snapped on the very day of their perplexing disappearance. This particular image has sparked a whirlwind of speculation and debate. Some discern a hint of distress in Madison's expression, suggesting a potential unease, while others argue that she appears neither joyous nor immediately threatened. As the investigation unfolded into the lives of Bobby and Sherilyn, the landscape became far from straightforward. Every answer and lead seemed as evasive as the vanished trio themselves. However, there was a prevailing sentiment palpable within the Latimer County Sheriff's Department that the family didn't simply disappear of their own volition. Foul play was involved, but nobody was sure what had happened by this point. Reports suggested that the pill bottle found in Bobby's truck had previously belonged to a person who had rented a room in their house. This individual was allegedly evicted by Sherilyn when his claims of connections to white supremacist groups and racist tirades became intolerable. Despite a thorough examination of this lead, it yielded no substantial conclusion. Further scrutiny into the Jamesons' residence unveiled a security camera footage capturing moments of Bobby and Sherilyn, loading their belongings into their vehicle. Throughout the footage, their mutual silence and detached body language painted an eerie scene, suggesting they were moving almost mechanically, devoid of any meaningful interaction or communication between them. By this point, the greatest development in this case had not happened, so all people could do was sit around and speculate what was going on. The peculiar behavior captured on camera sparked a multitude of theories and whispers, that became pivotal threads in the ongoing investigation. Among these swirling conjectures was an unsubstantiated notion linking the Jameson family to drug involvement, specifically in methamphetamines. This notion stemmed from the substantial cash discovered with the family at the time of their disappearance, coupled with their planned move to an area known for its association with manufacturing and distributing methamphetamines. Moreover, Close friends and relatives reported observing unusual behaviors in the weeks leading up to their vanishing, notably concerning their rapid and unhealthy weight loss. 
Surveillance footage captured them in a seemingly trance-like state, moving silently while packing their truck, raising suspicions of potential drug influence. But despite the eerie behavior, searches of their property yielded no evidence of drug use. Connie vehemently dismissed drug allegations, citing their dedication as parents to Madison and Colton, their eldest son. Starlet and Nikki, close to the family, echoed Connie's sentiments asserting the couple's cleanliness from drugs during the disappearance. Financial strains clouded their life when Colton moved back, leading to the loss of child support and a struggle to meet house repayments. This dire situation fueled speculation that they might have considered a one-time deal to alleviate their financial woes. The remote Sans Bois Mountains, known for clandestine meth labs, sparked theories of an inadvertent encounter or involvement in a drug deal gone awry. Reports surfaced that Bobby had reported a local meth lab to the authorities, potentially fueling animosity. A chilling account from Nikki, post-initiating the quest for truth, hinted at a disturbing encounter in the mountains, hinting at warning shots and a sense of foreboding. Her visit to the site of the family's tragic discovery only fueled her unease, suggesting an unsettling presence in the area. In their quest for answers, police investigators meticulously combed through every shred of physical evidence available at the family's residence. Adding a layer of complexity, when Sherilyn's mother, Connie Kokotan, viewed the surveillance footage, she found her daughter's demeanor far from unusual. She noted that Sherilyn had undergone a marked change in personality following the tragic and unexpected loss of her younger sister two years earlier. However, the security footage didn't just fuel one theory. It prompted more speculation. Following the mysterious vanishing of the Jameson family, a series of tumultuous events and strained relationships surfaced in the background. Bob, Bobby's father, passed away due to natural causes merely two months after the family disappeared. He and Bobby had a long-standing dispute that escalated into legal turmoil over an agreement about splitting proceeds from a gas station sale, leading to tension and legal actions. Starlet shared insights into the family dynamics, revealing how Bob involved his son in the gas station business from a young age. However, disputes arose when the agreed-upon division of sale proceeds didn't come to fruition, sparking legal contention. Amidst the conflict, security measures, like installing cameras, were taken due to concerns about confrontations and Bob's alleged threats. Connie, shedding light on Bob Sr.'s demeanor, expressed her worries, emphasizing the family's fear of him due to his temper and rumored connections to the Mexican Mafia. These concerns raised red flags about the safety of the family in their previous environment. However, the family's troubles extended beyond their interactions with Bob. A concerning incident emerged where Sherilyn wielded a gun against a boarder who allegedly expressed racial animosity, particularly against non-white individuals, putting Madison's safety at risk. This episode led to suspicions and made the boarder an initial suspect but investigations eventually ruled him out. Colton, Sherilyn's son from a previous relationship, voiced surprise at the family's silence about their move to the mountains. The lack of communication about their relocation raised questions, hinting at a possible detachment or secrecy surrounding their plans. Such revelations painted a complex picture, revealing underlying tensions, confrontations, and suspicions that swirled around the family creating a web of complexities for investigators to untangle in their pursuit of answers. During the initial probe, the family's pastor, Gary Brandon, disclosed startling details to the authorities. He revealed that the Jameson household was engulfed in what he termed spiritual warfare. Both Bobby and Sherilyn confided in him about encounters with spirits within their home. Sherilyn claimed the presence of spirits, stating that a deceased family lived with them and their daughter, Madison, conversed with the youngest apparition. Bobby, seeking unconventional solutions, asked the pastor about acquiring special bullets to combat these spirits and later referenced consulting the Satanic Bible for purging the evil. Upon their disappearance, a witch's Bible was found at their home, accompanied by enigmatic messages scrawled on the container intended for their relocation. One message referred to the killings of three cats supposedly to deter neighbors who allegedly poisoned their pets. Nikki, a close associate who dedicated years to the search effort, affirmed that Sherilyn's neighbors poisoned their cats. 
she revealed a shared interest in witchcraft, suggesting they owned matching witches' Bibles as a lighthearted gesture. Despite the casual ownership, Nikki attested to sensing an ominous presence in the house, describing an unnerving atmosphere during her visits. Additionally, suspicions surfaced regarding a final picture of Madison, taken in the mountains a day before their disappearance, speculated to be captured by an unknown entity. Allegations surfaced that Sherilyn may have incited tensions in the mountains by writing satanic messages with expressions of peace and love. Nikki recounted unsettling experiences in the house, describing a chilling encounter with a gray mist and Sherilyn's distressing notes scattered around the residence. Connie, Sherilyn's mother, dismissed her daughter's self-proclaimed identification as a witch, but admitted to Sherilyn's concerns about the house being haunted. Furthermore, Sherilyn's inquest into the house's history led to suspicions of it possibly being built on an Indian burial ground. An abandoned vehicle, adorned with satanic messages, was discovered near the family's vanishing point. Nikki suggested that Sherilyn had overwritten these messages with expressions of goodwill, speculating that this act might have provoked someone in the area. Connie and family friend Nikki also posited the involvement of a perilous religious cult in the family's disappearance. Nikki shared her belief that Sherilyn had encountered conflict with a group called the United White Knights, a cult purportedly situated in the nearby mountains, close to where the Jameson family vanished. Despite the conviction held by Connie and Nikki in this theory, the evidence fell short of substantiating the plausibility of a cult's involvement. Speculating on the Jameson family's fate, amidst Sherilyn and Bobby's struggles with severe depression, raises perplexing questions about their disappearance. Some have pondered whether the couple succumbed to their inner demons, contemplating the tragic notion that they might have taken their own lives, including that of little Madison. Sherilyn, grappling with bipolar disorder and at times neglecting her prescribed medications, sparked further inquiries into whether she might have been solely responsible for the family's vanishing. The discovery of an 11-page letter penned by Sherilyn, filled with bitterness and anger toward her husband, coupled with the absence of her 22 pistol, fueled suspicions surrounding her mental state. However, close friends like Nikki attempted to provide context to the letter, regarding it as Sherilyn's therapeutic outlet, scribbling thoughts that would eventually pass. Colton, Sherilyn's son, observed a noticeable decline in his mother's emotional well-being before he moved out. Her demeanor, marked by prolonged spells of low spirits and seclusion, cast a shadow on the family's unsettling timeline. Colton's revelation about their silence regarding the move to the mountains deepens the enigma surrounding their departure. His observation of his mother's efforts to turn things around contrasts with the unspoken decision to relocate, adding another layer of mystery to the puzzle. Connie, shedding light on Sherilyn's past anguish following her sister's tragic death in 2007, highlighted how profoundly this loss affected her, driving her into prolonged bouts of seclusion and profound sorrow. Insights from Starlet painted a nuanced picture of Sherilyn's complex personality during manic episodes, describing her as irritable and resentful, notably feeling envious of the relationships between Madison, Bobby, and Starlet herself. Bobby, burdened by both physical and mental anguish from a severe car accident and strained ties with his father, further compounded the family's tribulations. Despite their hardships, the family envisioned their move to the mountains as a fresh start, an attempt to leave their troubles behind and embark on a new chapter, but it seems that they never got to have that privilege. Authorities, grasping for explanations, floated another theory. Perhaps the family wandered lost amidst dense woods, succumbing to the grasp of hypothermia. However, Colton vehemently contested this notion, citing Bobby's profound familiarity with the wilderness, making it implausible for them to falter in such terrain. Connie echoed this sentiment, questioning the peculiarities of their position and the abandonment of their beloved pet, Madison's cherished companion, within the vehicle. Starlet, though grappling with the suggested theory, found it defied the logic of their circumstances, considering the rugged terrain and Bobby's physical limitations due to his back injury. The wilderness where their truck was found holds a sinister reputation as a haven for unsavory elements, leaving haunting questions unanswered. 
Every person touched by the Jameson's lives grapples with the profound void of not knowing the truth, an ache that permeates beyond the loss of lives. Israel Bishamp, the sheriff during their disappearance, bore the burden of unyielding guilt, an emotional toll that eventually led him to resign from his position. The weight of little Madison's untraceable whereabouts weighed heavily on him, causing a profound change in his life's trajectory. As the mantle of investigation shifted to a new sheriff, Jesse James, avenues appeared barren, leading to a dead end in the quest for closure. Wild speculations now swirl in the vacuum of unanswered questions, lending credence to the idea that perhaps the truth dwells in the most unfathomable of explanations. Despite the multitude of theories weaving threads of possibilities, the haunting mystery of the Jameson family's fate remained unresolved. Four years post their vanishing, in November 2013, a grim revelation struck friends and relatives, which was a confirmation long feared by everyone. Deep down, people were hoping that the family would still be alive and well somewhere, and would emerge out of the dark one day. But hunters stumbled upon skeletal remains of an adult male, a female, and a young child at the Sans Bois Mountains, merely three miles from where Bobby had parked his truck. The level of decomposition made identification almost impossible in the beginning. It wasn't until June 3, 2014, that forensic dental analysis finally confirmed the remains as those of Bobby, Sherilyn, and Madison Jameson. Tragically, autopsies couldn't yield a definitive cause of death. Bobby's skull bore a conspicuous injury, yet the cause behind this gaping wound remained an enigma, a frustrating puzzle piece in the narrative. Both law enforcement and the family's inner circle unanimously agree on the grisly truth. The family met a tragic end, but the details shroud themselves in ambiguity since nobody survived to tell the world what the family had been involved in. In the wake of the grim discovery of the bodies last November, an arduous journey of analysis commenced, a path that sought to unravel the mysteries shrouding the Jameson family's fate. Hopes soared as the remains underwent scrutiny, yearning for answers to both their identities and the enigmatic cause of their demise. Amidst this longing for closure, the results plunged loved ones into deeper despair. The remains, so ravaged, failed to yield definitive answers. What transpired on that pivotal day? Did the Jamesons cross paths with perilous individuals or forces? Or does the tragedy bear the chilling mark of a suggested murder-suicide? The enigma begets endless speculation, offering more queries than answers. Their unresolved demise continues to echo through paranormal discussions and true crime circles, leaving us to ponder, will the veil ever lift on this perplexing case? For family and friends, the search persists, an unrelenting quest for closure and truth amid the shadows of uncertainty. Nikki's poignant words echo the collective sentiment, a testament to the enduring torment and the relentless pursuit of elusive answers that remain just out of reach. This brings us to the end of the case of the Jameson family's disappearance. What do you think? Which theory feels the closest to truth for you? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe while you're at it.